Very few times in life can you say you fought GSP and didn't end up in the hospital. George St. Pierre has a certain fury for people who try to bully him. I see you walking around, you've been screaming, George! Where are you at, George? You no, think no. I'm afraid of you, man? Are you crazy in your head, man? Hey, f you and f your mother. He was terrible, I wanted to kill him. George St. Pierre wants to take revenge for the things that Nick has said. He's the biggest pay-per-view star on the planet for me, and I still don't think he won that fight. Why are you mad, bro? Because you're full of and everybody knows it? Is that why? Is this the end? He just had this crazy thing about bullying, and he thinks Nick Diaz is a bully. It was completely insane. Even though I'm scared and terrified inside, I'm putting a mask. I lie to them, and I even lie to myself. He said that he was beating the shit out of his son. I didn't tell my parents because I knew they were never accepted. Ooh, I got bullied as a kid. He was severely tortured as a child. That's what made him love martial arts so much. He's a very nice guy, but he has a certain anger inside of him. So what sorts of things would these bullies do? Tell me about what really happened when you were a kid. I actually started martial art because I was bullied uh, at school. Instead of focusing on what the teacher was explaining in front of the class, I was focusing on, on how I'm gonna get out of the class, take my, my, my books, and reach the bus before the bullies get me and, and hit me and, and beat me up. This guy, when I was young, he was beating me up in the bus all the time. I had like Adidas pants that you can tight like this. It was like <laughs> taken off. So I was like an underwear in front of everybody, in front of the girl. He was beating me up all the time. And he was stronger than me. He was like three, four years older than me. And he was tall and strong guy. He's a hockey player back in the day. And yeah, we, I couldn't beat him was kind of the the guy that was all the girl liked and he was like the taller stronger guy so he was kind of the alpha guy at the time I was not a popular kid girls didn't like me I didn't have a uh, much friend when I looked at my son in the mirror I didn't like what I saw I was not carrying myself with confidence I was looking down shrugged my shoulder the bully will always try to aim for the easier target, the person who looked weak. He was a terrible person back then. He was terrible. I wanted to kill him. Make my, my school time miserable, man. I was humiliated all the time. So that's how I start uh, karate at first, Kyokushin karate. Self-defense became a passion. He began taking the beginner's class. At age 18, he entered the Canadian pro fight circuit. After just five professional fights, GSP was called up to the big leagues, the UFC. He holds a mixed martial arts record of five wins with no losses. Standing five feet, 10 inches tall, weighing in at 167 pounds, George Rush St. Pierre! You ready? Bring it on! Here we go! I don't think it's me who's fighting in a cage. I think right now you're talking to Georges St. Pierre. When I fight in a cage, I'm GSP. With each contest, GSP grew as a fighter. Georges St. Pierre was the fastest learner, the hardest worker. If you're that committed to something, the sky's the limit. GSP is not the same person as Georges St. Pierre. GSP is like the Clark Kent. Superman, you know, like GSP is putting a mask. There's no perfect job that you like everything right. about it. It's impossible. My job as a professional athlete in mixed martial art, is I used to fight twice a year approximately. In 365 days, there's two days that I hate the most. It's the day that I'm fighting. I lie to them and I even lied to myself. In the schoolyard with the bully, what I've learned is how I got rid of bully is by putting a mask on me. Well, that's what martial art taught me. Even though I'm scared and terrified inside, when I'm going to fight, I have to put my poker face and go all in. You know, I have no choice. You know, George has said publicly many times that when he was younger, he used to get bullied. And that's what got him into martial arts. And uh, he just has this, this crazy thing about bullies. And he thinks Nick Diaz is a bully. Nick Diaz! Come on, George! What do you want, buddy? George likes to say I remind him of, of uh, one of the bullies that picked on him growing up or that he had to deal with. 
I hate everybody pulling the bully card. All bullies, I hate bullies. You said in the cage that George wasn't hurt, he's scared. I don't think George is hurt. I think he's scared. He's scared to fight everybody right now. What's up? What are you at, George? Why are you mad, bro? Because you're full of and everybody knows it? Is that why? Why are you mad for Saturday night? Watch what happens Saturday night. Bro, do you, do you really think I'm afraid yeah, of you? Hey, that's fine. Okay, no, I don't. You, scared, no, you I think don't. I'm afraid of you, man? Are you crazy in your head, man? I'm not scared of you. You'll okay. see Saturday if I'm scared of you. All right. Me. He said that Nick, I quote, I, I quote, he's the most disrespectful human being I've ever met, and I'm going to put the worst beating you've ever seen on him in the UFC. I'm putting a mask. I lie to them, and I even lie to myself. Nick Diaz is one of the greatest strikers to ever fight. He's going to hit you twice as much and you're never going to get to breathe. And once he realizes you're hurt, then he's digging to the body. Then he's putting it on you. His will to beat you is just unstoppable. I'm not afraid to admit that I'm afraid. I hate fighting. I really do. It's freaking unbearable. The feeling of uncertainty that if you don't know if you're gonna be humiliated, you're gonna be the victor, we're gonna be the loser. We look at nature, the predator will always prey on the easiest prey. And I was the same thing, I was a very easy prey, and I knew I needed to put a mask. You can't show your weakness. You don't lose if you never lose a fear. You learn how to deal with it. I was very good in mixed martial arts, but I really thought I wasn't made for this because the idea of fighting didn't make me happy. A few years ago, I, I drove my car on the, on the street in Montreal. It's like in, in the evening. I see a tall guy coming at me and he asked for, he begged for money. Put down my window. This guy is the guy that used to bully me in school. When I was young, my dad, one time, I was got beat up in the bus. So I told him, because I came back with a black eye. One time in my life, I told my dad what happened. So my dad, what he did, he goes to the house, he knock, talk to the daddy. So he said that his dad was like drinking and stuff. And he was beating the shit out of his son. So the way this guy learned to communicate through his dad was drunk and beating him up. That's the way he was communicating with me. Park the car, go talk to him. He says, what the hell are you doing here, man? He's like, he thought I would be angry because when he see me, he saw his reaction. He's like, like, shoot, like now I'm world champion, you know, right. like I, I can beat uh, beat him up, you know? Right. Back in the day, he was like three years older than me, was bigger, he was beating me up in the bus, this guy. Now he see me, he's like kind of a scare. I get out of my car, he don't know, he don't know if he should run or not. So I go to him, I say, I say, what you do here, man? He's like, yeah, I know, but things doesn't go well for me, you know? I was like, all right. I give him what I have left on me, you know? Like, I don't remember, like, a like hundred something. I say, get out of here, man. It's like, you're full of potential. It's like, get out of here, man. Like, when I was young, when I wanted to be like you, you're a tall guy, man. You, you, you're good looking. It's like, full of potential. A few months later, I go to my parents' house for having uh, dinner. Then my dad say, hey, uh, you know who come to the house uh, a few days ago? This guy. He said you met him in the street, but now he said, came he wanted to talk to you but I said you don't live here and I didn't want to give you a number but he said he said look he said hey, George he talked to me and he said so he changed my life now I have a job and I and I feel good I just want to say thank you to him and it, it felt so good like wow. just when I, when I met him and I didn't yeah. get angry at him like yeah because it's it was still there he did very bad stuff to me when I was young but when I see him it made me feel good kind of a relief now just to meet him in the street and make kind of a peace and give him money. Like, yeah, you beat me up, I give it to you. I still give it to you if you do that to me. That make me feel much better than if I would like beat, beat him, up. him up. When I was going to bullying, I was, I believe I was bullied because I didn't love myself. I, 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 because I project a very bad image of what I think of myself. And I didn't like to be bullied, of course, but I didn't like the, the person that I was. But I found out 
through martial art, in order to love myself, I needed to change myself. And I wish I would tell you that I got out of bullying because a Hollywood story, I, I used martial art to beat up all the bullies, but it's not how it happened to me. It happened because I changed myself from the inside out. I learned to love myself. One of the key to happiness in life is to love yourself. If you do not love yourself, at least love the person who you want to become. It's not the environment that's going to change for yourself. It, it's, you have to go from the inside out. You know, I can see cars come in and cops come in. If I ran around the back and behind it, there's a creek that was frozen because it's the middle of winter. And I jumped into that creek to get away from the cops. And as soon as I hit, I could feel the money come out. And then I could also feel that I was stuck under ice because when I came.